You know, you get That's those numbers in the right order every time, Justin. I, he does. I don't know, you need to be commanded for that because never you get fails. Here early, you yeah. never mix two up. He's, it's always five, four, three, two, one. It's perfect yeah, every yeah. time. And, and I'm going to trust He's Michael and I'm, I'm trusting Michael and not watching chat. All I have is my like VMX call. So. Well, Anna's just ruined her intro. Um, so I welcome have. to the crow's nest. Um, <laughs> see we're Bob back and after a few in. weeks. We're back after a holiday. Um, Jason and I, and today's honored guest is the legend herself, Ann Forrester. Roll the so eyes. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. And your your and mic, my dog. So, mic. My mic. Here's my mic. I'm speaking. Oh, here's my mic. Loving my mic. Um, so holidays. We're back from the holidays. We're back into oh. the new year. Um, everybody have a good holidays. Everybody in chat have a good holidays. Um, Busy. Uh, what did you do, Ann? What was your big holiday? What was the big one memory from your holiday? We went to Mexico in the middle of Omicron. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> Where'd you yes, go Yes, family Mexico? vacation. Uh, we went to Puerto Vallarta. Cool. Was... I've never been there. Yeah. Um, my dad wanted us to take one last family vacation while my niece wasn't uh, off to college yet. Um, okay. so yeah, that's cool. why we ended Was up in fun? Mexico. They let us back in the country though. So, Ooh, um, <laughs> I'm, I, that's a little, I'm happy that they did. So you could be on. The yeah. Show, well, Mexico that's... is actually not a hotspot right now. Mexico is actually pretty oh, green okay. as far as the, the COVID. Oh, so. Wow. Well, mm -hmm. Unlike yeah. Texas. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't looked at Texas <laughs> lately. <laughs> unlike, unlike, uh, yeah, never mind. Um, <laughs> hey, Rings changed his name to Otis the Hobby Pony. Otis the Hobby Pony. Otis the wow. Hobby Pony. Wow. Was, was that is that what he changed it to? Otis spelled O A T I S. So. Oh, Otis. I wonder what he feeds Otis. his pony. I think he feeds He's it. Otis us. is the Hobby Pony. Okay. Um, hey, Otis. Anyway. Jason. Yes. Vacation, holiday time. Oh yeah, we had a house we, full. We had uh, oh, yeah. daughters and fun? boyfriends and husbands and uh, dogs and a cat even for a surprise. I saw the so, Facebook yes. post of the it dogs was and the cat. Yeah, yeah, that the cat lived in this room most of the time. It, oh. the, the pugs don't really know what to do with a cat. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking you know, of pugs, what's that? What's that great two D art behind you that everybody can see in the image? Oh, that's that's uh, Frankie. My friend Tom did that after Frankie passed this last year. That's so, beautiful. Yeah. And soon I'll be revealing my wife actually had a portrait of Enzo done for me as well. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. maybe next week we can show that off too. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. cool. So cool. Yes, it is. Yeah. So but today. Jason, oh, go ahead, Michael. Sorry. Today, today, you. today on our show, we, we've. We have Anne on, so let's talk about let's talk some Anne. Um, okay. And you've watched a few of our shows, and I th mm -hmm. I think you're pretty familiar with this whole streaming thing, since uh -huh. you have uh, the, the, the toolbox thing. that's that's on every day of the week and every three day. times on Sunday. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I think she streams on Sundays too. I stream on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. Okay. I for yeah. my on my own stream. On your own stream, painting big. Yep. Yep. So yep, yep. we can check out Anne. If you don't know, if you watch this show, you've seen me slaughter the times of her show constantly. But Monday it's through Friday, 10.30ish, <laughs> depending on your time zone. I know I'm right in some time zone about that start time. I think it's 11.30 central time start time. Yes. Right? Correct. And it's Monday through Friday. She's always painting something cool, something awesome. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But... Let's back up. Let's go back in the in the Oof. way back machine. To, let's go to your origin story, Anne. Why the hell are you painting miniatures? Oh, geez. Well, um, I got into Dungeons and Dragons at age nine with the hmm. basic set. And shortly thereafter, I discovered these weird things called miniatures. Uh, mm -hmm. And I pretty much begged my parents for uh, miniatures and D and D, and they acquiesced, much to their chagrin, uh, <laughs> because I became not really obsessed with the miniatures at first. I was definitely obsessed with D and D. I loved mythology as a kid. I read fairy tales mm -hmm. and mythology all the freaking time, and so and fantasy novels. Once I got into that, but 
But since I loved mythology, reading the monster manual was just like mythology, except with additional mm -hmm. cool fantasy elements. So I just really got into it. And uh, we they got me like uh, the Grenadier Dungeon Dwellers set or, or Dungeon, oh, yeah. Dungeon Explorers set. Dungeon Explorers. Dungeon yeah. Explorers, yeah. Yeah, with the little henchmen with the torches and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was my first try at painting like people figures. I think we had a board game. We have one of the board games back then and it had plastic snakes as like kind of a, an element. And so my first miniature technically was dipping a plastic snake in bottles of red and black testers enamel. Mm. Yes, um, huh. not very illustrious. Bold, <laughs> bold move. Indeed, right? Um, I was very. Well, how much uh, detail was there left on the miniature after the dip? Very in little. The <laughs> blob, yeah. blob snake. <laughs> I mean, but that's still a better result than Bobby's Minwax class. Oh, I bet. I bet. Ooh, I don't even know if he's in chat. Little... I don't know if he heard it. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't Traditionally. matter. Hey, so I mean, he's, you, you, he's mentioned, you, you, you kind of beat me to my question. You mentioned uh -oh. testers. Um, what yes. was your. What was your next, like, did you get into any other paints, maybe poly S or what other paints were you back then? Were you doing at were that time? I was very into 2d art, which is what I eventually okay. went to college for. So I actually was doing mm -hmm. a lot of like paint by numbers and art projects using actual traditional oil paints and tube acrylics, um, mm -hmm. along with a little bit of watercolor, but, but not a lot. Uh, I was mostly mm -hmm. a draw, a drawing person though. So I tend to do a lot more sketching and colored pencil than I did, uh, painting. Uh, and eventually, actually, originally I liked, I far preferred oil paint to acrylics. Mm. This is the great irony of my life. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, lo I loved oils and I hated acrylics and look at me now. <laughs> do you ever go back to using oils? I know that's I've kinda... taken out, I don't, I swore I, that if I ever smelled turpentine again, it would be too soon. Um, because right. at art school thoroughly burned out my brain cells with that. But, yep. uh, yeah. you know, back before they told you it was toxic. Right. Um, but, uh, I did buy a bunch of Windsor Newton artisan oils. Those are the water soluble ones, which I actually right. like yeah. a lot. Um, and I keep kind of toying with the idea of taking them out for a miniature. If I did, I think mm -hmm. I wouldn't be happy doing something small. I'd have to do a bust. Yeah, yeah. the blending, I think, would be very interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but then you have to ask, you know, are you going to, like, there's the question, you know, like, Wapple just goes to town with them. But I think I would rather underpaint with acrylics and then use, like, oil glazes and blending over the top of that. I'm not sure. Like, Why I'm not? so I, I agree. People. I'm so impatient when mm -hmm. it comes to to using the oils and to just all right i want to i i like your idea of base coating because i've base coated a, a few acrylics and then gone into the mm -hmm. oils and stuff but mm -hmm. i'm still impatient and i just i like my result and then i start screwing around and i screw it up and i'm like yeah, yeah whatever i'll go back to it. i still have a lot to learn with acrylics as it was um mm -hmm. so that's the beginning Mm -hmm. Take us mm -hmm. a little forward, maybe even prior to joining Reaper. Um, oh, yeah. Where were you sure. at with miniature painting and what were you doing? Um, I got, I was into miniatures back and forth, kind of springing around just as a little hobby. Like I'd pick it up, I'd try to paint one. I didn't really understand shading or anything, um, but mm -hmm. I did understand lining weirdly. Uh, I understood like contrast mm -hmm. because I was, an, uh, you know, an artist. So at the time I hit college, which is when I found my first real role playing group, um, mm -hmm. then I started painting stuff a lot more uh, because I actually had an impetus to do so because we were gaming. So I actually would paint um, my boyfriend at the time. I painted a couple of battle mechs for him because we were playing Battletech on Saturdays. And then we would, you know, we'd have our Shadowrun game and our D&D games and all that. And so I painted characters for that. And I was pretty much on um, block painting, but I was lining because I kind of understood that there needed to be like contrast. Um, mm -hmm. So probably my earliest stuff is more like that or using like alternating light and dark colors to bring in the contrast and not really lining, depending. So very much block painting until I um, got out of school and I actually started working for our local game store, which is in Madison, Wisconsin, Pegasus Games. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, that was pretty much the when I was doomed to get heavily into miniatures because they found out I could paint and they said, you should play Warhammer with us. Uh, mm. And and that was the beginning of the end because I got a wood elf army that I really liked. And then I started picking up white dwarf and looking at like more techniques 
uh, than I had like known before or trying because there wasn't really an internet at that point there, there, it was just at the very beginning of that. And so, um, what was it? I forget the name of the group. There was a painting group on Yahoo groups, I think. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. What was that? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's a real yeah, generic you know, name, but yeah, it was, yeah. it was, yeah, it was, it was like mini painting or something. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. it was the mini painting group. And then there was one step sculpting, wasn't there? Yeah. One something list like sculpting. That. Yeah, one, yeah there we go. One list. Oh, one list sculpting. Yes, yes, yes. That was, uh, those were the two, the two forces. But, you know, trying to figure out how to do some of these techniques when you couldn't actually see someone do it, um, mm -hmm. it's kind of frustrating. So uh, I was mostly self taught because I was looking at pictures of other people's products and trying to use my traditional art school knowledge to kind of reverse engineer along with people's written descriptions what they were doing. So a lot of it, I think was really, I count myself as kind of self-taught for that reason, because I remember just trying to figure out, uh, fitting the paint to various levels and, you know, trying different brush mm -hmm. strokes and, you know, and just experimenting until I figured out something that I liked. Uh, so it was very much, uh, like only later when I started, when I traveled and actually hung out with some mini painters than I knew from online. Did I start mm -hmm. actually seeing other people perform various techniques and start kind of, oh, I could, I could try that. Right. So that kind of thing. So you were in Madison. Um, mm -hmm. how'd you get, how'd you get to Texas? Did, did miniatures take you to Texas or? Um, in it there, there was a, there was a, um, boomerang in there out to the East coast because mm -hmm. okay. I started dating a guy who worked for games workshop. Oh, and uh, and moved that. out there. Yeah, their their headquarters at that time was in Glen Burnie, Maryland. So mm -hmm. I moved out to Maryland and stayed out there. And that was pretty much where I split permanently from corporate America. I didn't understand at the time how um, permanent that split was going to be. Mm -hmm. Up until yep. that point, the jobs I'd worked were in finance, of all things. Mm. Um, I worked for Equifax. You have an art degree, but you're doing finance. Because my dad was an accountant and he pushed me very strongly in that direction. Yeah, you wanted yeah, to have an art degree. He did not want me to get an art degree. He did not want me to end up being an artist. He did not want me to be a freelancer. Yeah. Yeah. He wanted me to get a nice solid job working for the man like he did. <laughs> ah, well, you know. Mm -hmm. Which, well, cool. you know, so, is great. Yeah. Yeah. You do what you got to do, pay the bills. Yeah. But then if you can right, have time exactly. to. To have your fun and then make it yep. more fun then that's what it's all about yeah so, so the baltimore well, cool. trip was really when i started it was the first time i tried freelancing and it taught me mm -hmm. a lot because not everybody mm -hmm. is cut out for freelancing or if they later figure it out not everybody is cut out for freelancing at every time of their life and so i definitely failed at freelancing in many ways um mm -hmm. just like ended up with immense burnout for one thing um, and just didn't like, I didn't have a workflow. I wasn't as organized as I needed to be, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I did, I did mm -hmm. do a smart thing and carry a part-time job while I was a freelancer, which is what I'm doing now. My stream is essentially my part-time job. Um, because that's okay. nice. It gives you a steady paycheck, mm -hmm. but, uh, that was, it was really instructive. And I emerged from that, like kind of not knowing where I wanted to be. Uh, my boyfriend and I broke up, so I knew I was going to be moving back somewhere. So I ended up moving back home for six months, like you do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Managed, my parents didn't kill me and I didn't kill them, which is great. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that, around that time is when Jennifer Haley, my friend, your friend also, I think, are you in the Jennifer mm -hmm. Haley Does Not Dislike Me Club? I know Jason. Is. Oh no! Yeah, no, Jennifer. Yeah, I think I Haley. I, I, she gave, I've lost my. She gave me a I've hug. Lost my certificate, but I think I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm still in there. Last time I yeah, saw her, exactly. she gave me a hug. So I'm thinking yes. we're friends. Yeah. That's, I'm yes, put her on Jennifer the Haley side. does not yeah. dislike you. This is this is important. Okay. <laughs> we joke about it. It's it's it is a joke, but um, Jen got invited down to Reaver for the first ever artist conference in. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it was. It was like early, early 2003. It was like January of 2003, I want to say. Um, mm -hmm. And Ron asked her, do you know anybody else that you think would be valuable for us to invite? And she said, Anne, right away. So I had a, mm -hmm. I had a last minute invite. Um, like I was very last minute and uh, flew down there. And then pretty much we spent, I forget, those three or five days 
uh, sitting and testing Reaper's pro paints and their brushes and uh, just talking, like chatting with employees. Employees would come in to see what we were working on. And uh, Liliana Troy was there at that point mm -hmm. and Jen yep. and like Kevin Walker, who I just actually reconnected with on my Patreon, which is funny, uh, and a couple others from that time. And I, it passed my brain has totally forgotten anybody else who was there. Um, but uh, at the end of that point, um, Ed, uh, Ron pulled me aside and he asked me what it would take for me to move to Texas and work for them. Hmm. Yep. Cool. Which was and that was to be, and that was to be a staff painter at that at that point. What they it was a little bit weird, and it's funny because Ed told me that later, and and a lot of painters in the community who thought highly of me as a painter were like, "What?" Mm -hmm. They didn't get it. When, but Ed hired me for my personality. Believe it or not, I know mm -hmm. this is incredibly hard to believe. <laughs> oh, I believe but, it. You have, but a he told very me that personality. He, yeah, he wanted me. He wanted someone in the position of staff painter who wouldn't just sit in an office and paint. He wanted someone who was right. capable of teaching people who wanted to teach people who wanted to interact with the public and who would be good at it. Um, yeah. And I was the the personality that they were looking for. So mm -hmm. and I could paint. Yeah. So, you know, I, and then and the paint line. I, yeah, I, I, I don't think anybody would ever say you did not have a personality. That's true. Yes. Whether you enjoy it or not is the question. <laughs> well, they could say that about they could say that about us too. But yeah. Oh, um, yeah. hey, Michael, there's yeah, a question totally. in the chat. If, if we got oh, just yeah. a second, is that uh, sure. freehand or is that molded into the miniature you're working on? Uh, this I think is all I know freehand. the answer. That's all. This freehand. is all freehand. Yeah. It's okay. Freehand. Thank. Thanks. Sorry, and it's a work Anne, in progress. No, oh, it's good. Fired a question chat. From the chat, chat is a priority. Thing. And there's a shield as well. Yep. So. Yay, curly cues. Yep. Um, so we're, we we have you at Reaper. You're mm -hmm. starting. Um, you I've are the staff painter. You've started at Reaper, and you are the staff painter. No air quotes, because you really are a staff painter. And right. then, um, how how long until they rope you into creating a paint line? And is that something Actually, you really wanted to do? Did you push mm -hmm. them? You know, take us down that road a little bit. Cause I think a lot of people. All right. Like so, that. so first of all, it was actually part of my initial job description given to me almost on day one to okay. eventually create uh, a master series paint line. And I don't, or not uh, create the paint line that would become master series. Uh, mm -hmm. And I don't remember if Ed asked me before he offered me the job or if it was something mm -hmm. he told me later that he wanted me to do. Um, mm -hmm. but I was all in on that. Uh, I have always been interested in chemistry. I did, I, I used to really like to just mix different substances and see what would happen. And especially mixing like different products, paint products and things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. and so when he, and he knew that I, I was critical of the, uh, of the propane line. Like he knew I wasn't a big mm -hmm. fan. And I told him mm -hmm. actually in, in so many words as to why I wasn't, which is mm -hmm. I think why he got this idea of having me do it because I was able to really break down to him the qualities of the paint, the specific qualities that I didn't like about it. And so mm -hmm. that was something that he felt like if I was capable of analyzing these things, then I should also mm -hmm. be capable of analyzing potential products and maybe creating a new product line that had traits and qualities that would better suit miniature painters. Mm -hmm. So, so that was kind of how, how that came about. And I started about six months into my staff painter job. I actually started mm -hmm. working on that. Mm -hmm. um, I moved to Reaper in, uh, moved to Denton, well, Louisville first, but I moved to Texas in 2003. I started at Reaper on April 1st, which is the best anniversary to ever have, the best work anniversary. Right. You're never right. quite sure when you walk in the door if they're going to tell you to go home. <laughs> <laughs> April Fool's in. Um, right. But, uh, but yeah, so we started the, I started the preliminary work on MSP about six months after I started at Reaper. And, I was and all what in. was your, and what was your background in mixing and creating a paint line at that point? Nothing. Okay. The best, probably the, the thing that gave me the best edge in doing it 
was uh, I took several, uh, two color theory courses in my college days. Mm -hmm. And, and because I was used to working with tube paints, I very much understood the principle behind uh, having certain colors represented in your line that would be useful, like the mm -hmm. use of a color, right? And it, mm -hmm. so it's not just, mm -hmm. oh, we need a yellow, we need a, you know, we need a few greens, we need this, those colors should be as useful as you can manage. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't remember if Ed came up with the triad idea or if I did, but, mm -hmm. but, uh, it's a great idea. It was a great idea. Went. Yeah. It, we'll give it you makes credit sense. for it. You're on air right now. We'll just give you credit for it. So, so See, when you Ed, came up with the Reaper triad line, yeah, I'll, I'll take the bullet for it. I you, might it have. Right I, it's yeah. it's, it's sure almost 19 years ago for God's sakes. Yeah. Yeah. It's been it's a while. Canon now. It was, it was, no, it's been yeah, maintained. It's, it's canon idea. now. Yeah. 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 It's, okay. It's, it's canon. Official. I got it. I'll, I'll yeah. claim that yeah. from now on at all Reaper events. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but just say, uh, yeah, it's been it's been canonized on the crow's nest, so it is true yeah. and it's fact. Right. And in some ways, the other thing that helped me was, um, and I think all painters are like this: when you are mm -hmm. not an employee of a particular paint company or not affiliated with a particular company. Well, you're what I call kind of a paint mercenary, which means you try everything mm -hmm. and you try mm -hmm. all the lines and you very quickly, if you're me, you come to ideas about what you like from those lines and what you don't like from those lines. Uh, and you have, mm -hmm. you have just takeaways. And I tend to analyze things. It's just part of me. Uh, and mm -hmm. so a lot of the initial Master Series line was based on things I thought I had seen done well with other paint lines. Um, and so like just starting, I mean, everybody, well, except Vallejo starts with like red and works their way down the spectrum and, you know, does a mm -hmm. selection of this or that. There were some colors I ripped off whole heart, uh, from some other paint line colors that I just loved and used all the time and wanted. We also carried yeah. forward some old pro paint colors like Walnut, Walnut being, you know, my favorite pro paint color. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, I think it was. And I love to organize things. I love to divide things into groups. I love to like, just kind of um, do things like that. And so it, my, my biggest frustration is just that as the line progressed and got so darn big, all the reds aren't together. All the yellows aren't together. I think it makes more, right, yeah. uh, I think it makes more confusion and it makes me sad that we couldn't uh, plan it from the beginning, but I had no idea the scope mm -hmm. of what Ed wanted when we started that. Well, like, how did than, you than, go ahead, Jason? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, well, no, 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 ask, Jason. Other go. than just the the chroma, the the value of the color, mm -hmm. what are the other things that you look for in a good paint, or that you tried to instill in the Reaper paint line? Um, good question. This is about paint chemistry. That's why uh, I'm here. Michael <laughs> never gets to that. <laughs> Jason asks the asks the actual utilitarian questions. Uh, yes. Yeah. That's so. His role. Uh, where do I start? Where do I start? Where do I start? Okay. So, um, paints have qualities. And when I started with Reaper, I started researching one of the first things I did when I, when Ed told me he wanted the paint line was I started researching online as much as I could about paint chemistry. What makes a paint high coverage? You know, what, why do some paints react to each other and not work? Why do paints separate? You know, all mm -hmm. these things and paint chemistry is not rocket science. I actually said that earlier today. It's really not. You can find good, informative articles written by paint companies for their employees um, and uh, some some uh, actual like research studies as well, depending on this stuff. Uh, and so I essentially was able to educate myself about the basics of paint chemistry uh, so much so that eventually, like 10 years later, I was talking to my sales guy and he's like, you know what? I just need to hook you up with this chemist because the stuff you're saying is above my head. <laughs> <laughs> so I had essentially done enough that, that I could talk paint chemistry to a paint chemist and they would understand exactly what I was saying and what I wanted. Uh, mm -hmm. So I looked up things like acrylic versus latex versus vinyl. Those are all resins. Um, which is funny. I, I remember when there was a paint line that started up, I think it was Attican. It was shortly, it was like five years after Master Series launched, I think. Uh, Attican was done by a Canadian group and they were so excited to tell the, the world that there was resin in their paint. 
Like I remember hearing mm -hmm. this and doing mm -hmm. a little face palm because everybody's yeah. pain has essence. Mm -hmm. but they didn't get mm -hmm. it because they didn't understand it they were just hiring somebody to do a paint line and this is where reaper yeah. really stands out right because they're the only company only miniatures company that does its own paint and doesn't outsource mm -hmm. it um yeah, but yeah so sure. i studied resins and surfactants and all sorts of fun stuff um and then when a new product pops up like these acrylic inks that everybody likes so much now i researched that too and figured out what had happened with that uh, mm -hmm. and how that came about and what that was. So it's just curiosity. Like I have a, a whenever I'm interested in a topic, I get very, very curious about it. I do a lot of searches. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of reading. I try to figure out how it works. So in, while you're developing this paint line, you're still mm -hmm. the uh, staff painter. How did you balance the two? Cause both of those take an inordinate, in order it, in order whatever, a shit ton of time to commit to <laughs> how did right? i balance you got to do it badly uh, yeah yeah <laughs> um it was very difficult and it, it was easy at mm -hmm. first because there was mm -hmm. a lot more to paint than there was to make paint like uh -huh. we weren't selling a lot you know we had very we didn't have a lot of colors at first we only started with 54. and so mm -hmm. and and the paint line was brand new so it was going to get it was going to take time to get traction because pro paint hadn't been a big selling line um mm -hmm. and so at least relatively like pro paint they would still make it by the gallon and master series now it's at least three gallons and sometimes we're flipping it more than once a month if it's a popular right. color um right. it may have gone even beyond that since i left to be honest i have no idea uh mm -hmm. but so at first it was very easy to just go in and make some paint and then come back and paint in the afternoons or vice versa you know whatever would happen some days i didn't need to make any paint at all um mm -hmm. but then as the paint line got traction and part of the reason it got traction is because we got famous painters to use it to try it to give us feedback you know we mm -hmm. wanted that um, so Jen tried it and Marika tried it and, you know, Derek was using it and, you know, a bunch of people. Uh, and as we did that, as we engaged the painting community, then we started to see more traction. And mm -hmm. I don't remember how many years it took. I think I was staff painting at least for an additional three to four years after the launch. But mm -hmm. it got to the point where I just wasn't like we kind of gave up on getting every new release painted which was really it, i wasn't as fast as i am now uh so it was mm -hmm. really hard for me to even try to keep up with that um right and uh and i just started funneling my time where i felt like it may have been i'm trying to remember how many years it would have been but there came a point where i was so i had reburned out on painting but i was excited about the paint line and so, right. and so Ed, I pretty much had a, had a like kind of a chat with Ed, as I recall, and asked him if I could just transition over fully to, to the paint line. And that was at mm -hmm. least, I, I want to say it was, a, it was about a decade in, because I want to think, mm -hmm. I think at that point, everything was picking up a lot. We had a lot more colors. Um, and it was just, I was there every day. I was mixing paint every day, uh, all, almost all day. And so I didn't have time to paint anymore. And you, I mean, was, is it fair to say there was a point in time, a period of time where you lost your passion for mini painting? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. It's always a danger when you're doing it for a living. And if you don't right. pace yourself, and even if you don't burn out, if you mm -hmm. do it for a living, you kind of lose the energy to do it in your real life, like in your side right. life, your, 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 your right. you life. So yeah. I could paint something for Ron, but I wouldn't have the passion to go home at night and want to paint again. Um, right. So I totally dropped out of competition. I totally dropped out of painting in general um, for a few years while I recharged. More yeah, and more than a few years, but mm -hmm. you know, because you and I had many conversations during that time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, full disclosure sure. here, I I probably wouldn't be on air doing this show if it wasn't for Anne. So let's Ooh. trace that back a little bit. Um, Anne is probably, if I had to pick just one person in my path in Reaper, the very starting point, it, it, it was, it's Anne. 
Anne came up to me at my first ReaperCon where I just showed up as a general attendee, won a few Sophies. And that's when I think right shortly after that, you contacted me and said, hey, you want to paint something for Reaper? And that was mm -hmm. Maurice Gray Shroud, Shroud I think, mm -hmm. uh, sculpted by Bob, Bob Rodolfi. Very first, mm -hmm. that was my very first commission piece ever, mm -hmm. ever, 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 ever. So it just one, I mean, Anne's the one that started that whole ball rolling. And then well, a couple months later, after I finished that was when you, you reached out and said, Hey, artist con come. And yeah. I'm like, I'm there. And <laughs> then one thing led to another and led to another. And you were still staff painting that time and you were still into it. But I remember talking to you maybe a year or two later on down the road and you weren't painting as much. And I, mm -hmm. you know, I saw it and yeah, it's, it's that whole balance game. Um, and mm -hmm. to be honest with you, I always commend folks like you, like Aaron Lovejoy, uh, Wapple, folks that are can just, that's their job, that's their gig. No mm -hmm. way in hell I could do that. I, <laughs> no way. I, first of all, I, I, I've got a decent job that pays well and I love that. Yes, I, I still you don't want to be a starving I artist. I pay the bills. I don't want to be a starving artist. But I, even in my hobby time, when I do a fair amount of commission stuff, I have to take breaks and I can't mm -hmm. take breaks yep. Um, yep. and can, couldn't take breaks and still pay the bills. So I always have a, a lot of uh, respect for that. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I think so every I think painter really I know. Cool. Yeah. I think every painter I know cycles in and out of the hobby. I mean, David certainly so, does. He's right. got. So I mean, tell me. Yeah. So tell me. So you're, you're a reaper. This is towards mm -hmm. the end of your official time living in Texas. You're still tied yep. to Reaper. You're still on the Reaper yep. payroll now. Yep. Um, but you're going to, you're going to make your break. Um, you're going out mm -hmm. to California, going to go shack mm -hmm. up with your hubby <laughs> and um, you guys, but you started even before that getting your fire back for painting again. How mm -hmm. did you, what, was there something that, that, spark that interest again in your painting because you kind of had walked away from it a little bit and now yep, you were, were yep. writing and you were doing a number of other things yep, yep. you're doing the bonsai plants there for a while too which i thought was yeah. super awesome texas killed uh, all those <laughs> yeah so what what fired that up again um it's just it's kind of the cycle you like i said you i'd spent enough time out of the hobby mm -hmm. and i kept wanting to get back into it and you guys coming to artist con would always get me like kind of jived up again um and mm -hmm. reaper con would always get me jived up again and all the cons we went to you know adepticon would get me you know interested mm -hmm. again um and i think it was a combo of wanting to start the patreon and like wanting to give it a shot and uh, talking mm -hmm. to David, because I started talking because I still always liked like I was always interested in in competition painting and in kind of like the that aspect of our hobby and uh, and how I guess I feel like it's a I'm passionate about it. A lot of people aren't passionate about competition painting, but I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so we mm -hmm. were kind of talking about competitions in the, in the, uh, you know, in our hobby over here and how it differed from the scene in Europe and all that stuff. Um, that's how yeah. David and I really hit it off. Um, I had gotten a divorce and so I was kind of, I was kind of spinning free in a lot of ways in my life. And because of the divorce, mm -hmm. I had a lot more time, like in the evenings, I had a lot more time. So, mm -hmm. and then Jim at Dark Sword was still like, he had always commissioned me a little bit here and there. So I was doing a few pieces for Jim and, mm -hmm. uh, I decided to do the Patreon because I felt like I wanted, I was getting excited about the hobby again. And I felt like I wanted to give back to the community. Like all the time I was at Reaper, it was really hard to find the time to educate. Um, mm -hmm. Kit would talk to me about it from time to time, Brian would talk to me about it. And they'd be like, Hey, mm -hmm. if you want to write up something for a web page on X, we can do that. We can, you know, do it. But when did I ever have time to do it? A paint department was always hopping. Uh, and right. so I felt like, like if Reaper, like if I could help anybody in any given way that of my choosing, I wanted to teach more. I wanted to, mm -hmm. to share with people all the info about master series and working with it that I knew but that maybe there wasn't a really good avenue for telling people about up to that point. And because I'd gotten the divorce and I was living separate from, you know, or I was in process, 
and I was living mm -hmm. separately, I had the time to finally jump in on that. And the Patreon rejuvenated me hugely. Um, mm. I mean, what, that was- What is your Patreon name, Anne? We've mentioned Painting it several Big. times. Painting, yes, Big. Painting Big. Yes. On Patreon. Yes, indeed. Patreon.com slash Painting Big. And go. I do a lot. I mean, it's all Master Series in there. <laughs> But I did get, uh, I did start to get the vibe back a little earlier than that because, and I would blame um, two people. I would blame Kirill and Sergio. Mm -hmm. um, we all know those guys, those famous guys. Mm -hmm. uh, Kirill, I didn't realize how much of an impact Kirill would have on my painting until well after his seminar. Um, mm -hmm. And he had a huge impact on the direction I've gone after that. And then Sergio uh, also was just good because I met people like somebody, um, people like Steven Garcia, who's a real good, I like Steven a lot. I've not that met him prior fantastic to that. Painter. Yeah. yeah, a fantastic painter and a great guy and his wife is hilarious. Um, so we mm -hmm. hung out with them at a con or two after that. But meeting other painters who are really good and getting excited about the hobby is just like, it's mm -hmm. always rejuvenating. And so uh, I'd been working on that Soldier 76 statue, the Overwatch statue. And oh, I yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. yeah, that I had kind of decided that that was the thing that was going to get me back in. Like I was going to blow as many mm -hmm. hours as it took to do that sucker to the level I wanted it. Um, so mm -hmm. that was my my back in, and and right around the time that I was finishing that was when I, I launched the Patreon. Right before that, I did. I was doing all this stuff to get back in. Um, yeah, I guess I just and felt you like had it started doing. And you'd started streaming with Reaper too at that time too, yes. right? Yes. And that yeah. was a huge energizer as well. Uh, because I always, even though I'm an introvert and I very much am, large cons drain me. Like I am mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I am just ready to just plop over on my face and say, please, nobody talk to me. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it may not seem like it, but, um, but it still is like the streaming is energizing to me. It doesn't mm -hmm. tire me out like other stuff. Uh, I really love my community. I love uh, all you guys who show up for my streams. Like you honestly make my day better. Um, and I love interacting with my my audience. And so I, I watch mm -hmm. the chat compulsively on my streams. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, that is it killing you help. not watching the chat here? No, actually, it's okay. okay uh, it would probably good. distract okay. me a lot from you guys and the mm -hmm. questions. So it's probably a good thing I'm not. Yeah. So a couple of questions in chat. Uh, this is Monique. She's a 54. She's an old school Reaper figure uh, sculpted mm -hmm. by Werner Locke. Um, the wings are, somebody did guess it uh, from a diva figure. I don't forget the title, but diva's in the title. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I just kind of was like, I was looking at her. I wanted to goof around in some more golden MM and, and stuff. And mm -hmm. I had these wings just lying around. I'm like, God, they fit perfectly. Um, so mm -hmm. I just did a so minor right conversion scale. and sculpted them up. Yeah, they're not, they're old school wings. So they're not quite uh, Julie Guthrie wings um, with the complexity of the feathers, um, but they work. If I would have had Julie Guthrie to custom do some wings, that would have been great, but maybe next time um, because she makes Julie Guthrie, I think is the best at, at, mm -hmm. at feathers. If I would have to, if I'd have to pick one person, um, yep. So, yeah. yeah. So, Even painting yeah. the Sphinx, I didn't get sick of it. <laughs> right. Right. No, totally. Um, Jason, uh, I yeah. have more questions, but I feel like I've been asking all the questions. I want to make no, sure. No, no, no. This is, I mean, this is, this is a solid painter show here. So, yeah. I mean, I, I have some resonance with the freelance stuff, and you could see yeah. me nodding my head because, uh, I mean, that's been my living for 20 years. So right. the waxing and waning of your uh, level of participation and excitement about uh, projects that you're either working on or involved in uh, outside of your freelance career mm -hmm. uh, is kind of fascinating when you think about it, because we all mm -hmm. kind of go through the same things. Yeah. Um, so I, I have a lot of resonance there, but as far as just the actual painting, I'm enjoying listening to the conversation. <laughs> so I still do. Oh, Anne, go ahead. Yeah. Um, how do you, and this is, a, this is a question I've asked other painters that have come on, commission style painters in particular. Mm -hmm. How do you push through that project? It's for a commission. It's for a company. It's for, you've got to get paid for it, but you've mm -hmm. kind of hit the wall with this figure. 
And mm-hmm. you're like, I don't want to look at this damn mini again for, you know, mm-hmm. but you need to get it done. How mm-hmm. do you kind of find your motivation to push through that? What's some tips you can give somebody that hit that? Cause I, I hear that a lot. I get a lot of those questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Two things. Um, one thing, the one thing that most, most, uh, kind of works for with, in regard to the specific model on, mm-hmm. I learned this at Reaper. Actually, I learned this being a staff painter because you have to paint things that you don't necessarily like when you're a staff painter. Uh, mm-hmm. but on every model, there's usually one thing you can figure out that you could enjoy. So mm-hmm. I think that it's concentrating on the thing you can enjoy with pushing through like even if it's okay i don't like this model but i'm going to practice my osl or i don't like this model but i'm going to put some freehand on it and that will help or i'm going to practice my skin tones uh, because i have to work on my blending anyway so why not work on it on this model um so Mm. kind of distract yourself from the model itself by focusing more on the technique and and Mm -hmm. how it's helping you learn or helping you improve Mm -hmm. Um, painting ugly models or models that don't appeal to you actually can in that way almost be a good exercise because it'll make you concentrate more on the technique and less on the mini. Um, and the, the other thing is, hmm? true. the other thing uh, that I do is honestly, I distract my mind. Uh, Mm. if I sit there in silence and try to work on a model, I'm really hating, it's going to be a slog. So, Mm. uh, I will, I used to put on like a movie that I'd seen a million times, like Fellowship of the Ring. Mm -hmm. Uh, But Mm -hmm. I still find that visual, visual things, I don't watch watch a lot of TV or movies. So visual things distract me. It's too easy for me to look up uh, and watch parts of it. So I went entirely to music uh, Mm -hmm. or audiobooks. David and I will paint and listen to audiobooks a lot. So audiobooks, that's mm -hmm. all I do. Music, music, I start getting into the music too much. (laughs) <laughs> I, I, get distracted. I, am sing. I do sing while I listen to my music. <laughs> All right. So audiobooks. You've you you painted a miniature watching or listening to a specific audiobook. You set it down, it goes in your case or whatever. You pick it up later and you look at it. How many times do you remember the section of that audiobook that you were painting when you what you were listening to when you painted? I, I, would I can pick up a miniature case. and I can remember the story from a certain book. Oh, wow. Interesting. And it has nothing yeah, to do I'm with the miniature. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not as good at that. If it's music, I can usually remember the songs that I was listening to while I painted a miniature. Like, because every mm-hmm. mini has like a different, not a different playlist, but like some minis definitely like the 70s and some minis really love mm-hmm. 80s pop <laughs> and some right. minis want trance or ambient. Um, and so I can remember that. I can remember who was a 70s mini and who was an 80s mini and who was a trance mini. Um, but uh uh, I, I can, li- I can remember the book that I was listening to, but I'm okay. bad at remembering exactly the chapter. Cause once I have that noise in my ears, I'm absorbing the information, but I'm also yeah. like really in the zone as far as the painting goes. So I think that distracts yeah. my memory. It helps I me. I find it helpful. Oh, go ahead, Michael. It, it, I'll, it, let's make one last comment. It just, it helps me not overthink what I'm mm-hmm. trying to do. And yep. sometimes when you're trying to do, maybe it's a new skill, maybe it's a skill that you're just not quite as comfortable with. You mm-hmm. overthink it. And, and by listening to an audio book or even music, it just, it takes that away from you. And you just kind of, mm-hmm. it's easier for me to get in the zone, but go ahead, yep. Jason. Oh, I was just going to say, I find it useful when I'm running my head up against the wall to take a couple hours off and go do something else. Uh, Mm -hmm. whether it's something Mm -hmm. creative or just going for a walk or or playing Mm -hmm. with the dogs or whatever it is. Um, Very often, if you take 10 hours and you struggle for 10 hours, you'll find you can pack the same amount of actual work into eight hours with a two hour break. Yeah. Because Mm -hmm. running your head against the wall absorbs so much time and energy. Mm -hmm. And if you can feel yourself getting to that point, it's time to take a break. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with taking a break. You can't always push through. And a lot of times it actually uh, detracts from what you're doing. It, it's to Absolutely. the detriment of your actual work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm An hour and a half is about my peak work time. That's another. It's, yeah. I listen to a lot of productivity uh, audiobooks and a lot of like stuff like that. Um, and it, it has taught me to kind of figure out what my optimal work segment time is. And I yeah. can paint for about an hour and a half, but then I need to take a break. 
Yeah, hour and a half for two is is about. I need to get up and and do something else for a little bit, even even just a ten minute break sometimes. Yes, because yeah, otherwise, I mean, there's it's good to be absorbed by your work, but you don't want to get consumed by it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and I've got a lot of other okay. hobbies still, like I'm. So I I want to start up bonsai again now that I'm out here. I need my baby trees. Ah. Yeah, it should work really well where you're at. I know, I know. Finally, a climate that will actually let me keep a Japanese maple alive. Yeah. <laughs> Texas did not. <laughs> no, no, that's a lot of nurse mating in Texas for something like that. Yeah. Oh, they just, I tried. I tried everything to keep the poor things alive, but the summer would kill them. They just hate the heat and they hate the sun. So, Anne, so, with, yeah. with, the, with the change of your career to the more of the freelance work, mm-hmm. um, and all the instruction videos that you do, I mean, Mm -hmm. five days a week, you're basically teaching, right? Mm -hmm. How has that impacted your high level painting? Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm trying to think, like, I definitely still go through fugues where I don't feel like painting. And then Mm -hmm. like zones where I feel like painting. And uh it i think more than anything it's just making the time now it's not that i don't feel like painting i do Mm -hmm. but finding the time now that i've got i'm juggling a lot of freelance balls um you Mm -hmm. know because reaper i'm a very morning productive person but my morning is my Mm -hmm. stream so in a lot of ways Mm -hmm. the stream takes up some of my most productive hours And then Mm -hmm. it can be a challenge for me to restart in the afternoon and, you know, and refocus. And I have to factor in the time it takes me to do the Patreon stuff. And then I'm trying to get my writing. I'm still working on my writing um, after all this time. Mm -hmm. So I have writing. I have, you know, the stream. I have when I stream on the weekends. um, It's like, and then I have to, you know, make sure that the house doesn't fall apart. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know, basic cleaning and upkeep and the things that I need to do just as, you know, David's, you know, partner and things like that. And we don't even have a dog yet. That's going to be another distraction. But you all know, like, life is, life is distracting. So. Yeah. Has, has all this, has all this instruction and focusing on communicating your approaches, has it changed your level of painting has it has it in i don't know if it has if anything what changes is my mindset about what can be done Mm -hmm. um and like i'll do things on the stream and it will spark a series as an example actually you brought up the what i now know is the the um january mini here can i get this guy in focus Focus, camera, focus. No. Mm-hmm. Ta-da. Ta-da. Um, but uh, so when I was, I'm doing this series on my Patreon for $2 uh, tier called 28 millimeter textures, because I used to really think uh, there wasn't a lot of textures you could do at 28 millimeter. But then as I was working on Noel, uh, as I started mm-hmm. working on him, I realized, no, actually, you can do a lot. Some of it may be slightly out of scale, but you can do a lot on a 28, depending yeah. on your brush control and your paint consistency. Uh, mm-hmm. And so like doing that model actually sparked me doing this 28 millimeter textures series because I realized what a little bit more what could be done and and that it was accessible, that it wasn't like impossible for somebody to do who was a relative, like as long as you're like an intermediate painter, um, mm-hmm. you could probably get okay results. So, Mm -hmm. so it's like that I'm doing so much instruction and painting. And when I do that, it makes me really micro focus on the why and the how and how, Mm -hmm. what makes this work. Uh, Cause I'm always talking about unloading your brush and paint consistency and what brush are we using and why does it work? And, and so that essentially changed my mindset about textures on 28 millimeter where I Mm. still feel like larger models are where you can really go in depth with texture and pattern and, and surfaces, but there is a lot you can do on 28 mil. So that's an example of how like instruction has changed my thinking on some stuff. Oh, cool. Cool. Waiting. Jason. Uh, oh, I just I just sent you a text. Are we gonna do giveaways today? <laughs> oh shit! I totally forgot about it. Give All right, so. Um, I'm sorry, I just. Dan, have you? 
Where is it? We, I need to coordinate on. with Stall my wife on yeah. where the dogs were for a minute. Oh, no problem. Right. Dogliness. So yes, I know I'm going to get we, a puppy. We forgot to do this. So, oh, Anne, you get one for automatically being a guest on our show. But Oh, good. Um, this, this is the exclusive Crow's Nest Pokey Tool. I don't know whether I you have one, one of these or not. No, I, I don't. I should have given you one at ReaperCon. I, that's you my should fault. Have. We you. actually might. Um, yeah. We actually have already uh, pre-qualified for two of these. We have six. Okay, perfect. That's why I've, I've been and, noticing lots of lots of subscriptions going and back and forth. So. I believe we missed it um, because you guys mm. are deep in conversation. Thank you, Jimmy the Brush, mm. for a massive raid earlier. And yeah. after the oh, oh, nice. Uh, and Kathy uh, Wapel. Kathy Wapel. Kathy Wapel. Yeah. Well. And Kathy too. Look at that. Yay, and Kathy. Love. Thank you guys. Yep. Yay, Jimmy. So yes, we will. Freezing. Right now, we're giving away five Pokey Tools. Is that what? Is that right? Away, uh, two Pokey Tools, and I will give you one more. We'll go to three. Okay. We'll go to three. Three Pokey so, Tools. And Anne gets her own Pokey Tool for being a guest Yay. on the show. That's a, oh, yeah, that's, a, that's how we now, pay our guests. Now we're at four Pokey yes. Tools. There four we go. Four Pokey Tools. Four Look Pokey Tools. You guys so, can do it. You guys can do it. Do you know, Anne, are you aware of this? Have you, you I showed, I, I think you've seen this Pokey Tool. Do you know who sculpted this? Yeah. Wasn't it Julie Guthrie? It was. You know who did the lettering on the back? No. It wasn't Julie. It wasn't Julie. <laughs> if it wasn't Julie, who else did? Who else would have done the lettering? Uh, Bob Rodolfi. Oh, Rodolfi. that guy. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. guy. That guy. So Julie and Bob collaborated on this. Book. And the great know, thing I'm, about I'm it. I'm extremely jealous of it. I know. And they did it out of the goodness of their hearts. They didn't, we didn't yes. even know that they were doing this. So That's because they're really fantastic. wonderful people. Bob and Julie are really, wonderful people. They are. They're the best. We just we strive to just come up close as close as we can to their standard. We're never going to yeah, get there, much. but exemplary yeah, beings. But, no, I think Jason. Jason yeah. gets there. Jason gets. Yeah, Jason Jason's upwards there. the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he does. Jason raises the show. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. takes it to the. That's me. Level I'm a raiser, all right. You are. <laughs> you're a you're a hell raiser. Um, mm -hmm. So. What's what's what is your do you did you make a New Year's resolution related to your hobby or related to your art? Oh boy, I don't think I did. Um, mm -hmm. I tend, I I had I did make two other New Year's resolutions. So I okay. If you what load are, on too many, yeah. If you load on too many, then it's kind of like yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. I made a weight loss one because it was time. Okay, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yep. Yeah, because uh, yeah, <laughs> I got back from Mexico and stepped on the scale and went ah. ah. Bad, but like you, you but do. you had but that's okay. It's Mexico. You're supposed to have a yeah. good time. A lot of pina coladas. I was supposed I'm to have sure. lots of pina coladas. Yes, exactly. Well, that's what you're <laughs> supposed to do. Yeah, it was an all inclusive. I'm sure, right? It, Dad, were, yeah, Dad did it, so it, it was all inclusive. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's the only way to go. That's the only way yeah. to go. Um, I did a uh, kind of a. Uh, I am training for mm -hmm. a mountain bike race in June. Ooh, all so right. So that's, cool. that is my, that's one of my goals is I, we, Michelle got us a Peloton, um, at my, for my Ooh. birthday. So I have been um, training on that in the winter. Cause you can't, I can't, nice. there's like six and in, eight inches of snow right now. Yeah. It's 20 degrees yeah. outside. Not really. Bike so bike. that's, that's my, uh, non hobby related thing, but Mm -hmm. My um, hobby related thing is to bring a little bit more uh, to the show. And one of our angles that we're going with this show is uh, sculpting. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to do some sculpting segments of traditional sculpting, but um, I'm wanting to uh, figure out, and this may be more of a mid year kind of uh, goal is to get into some digital sculpting as well. Yep. Neat. I was really, yeah. That too. yeah. Yeah, we're working on that. So those are those are my kind of things. And then when just for for painting itself is, um, I have so many things I've bought over the years. So such a huge mm -hmm. pile of miniatures. I really yes. want to um, get more of those done. And here's the thing: I want to get them done in, in inner competitions and stuff. But I also maybe some of these don't need to be all the way at competition level. Yeah. And maybe they yep. just need to be painted. And I, I find if I'm, if I said, you know what, this is just going to be a for fun piece. They end up really being a lot of fun and you're mm -hmm. not stressing on yep. 
the whole competition thing and not every piece. I think I saw Rhonda made a comment a little bit ago. Not every piece you do should be commission, competition, ultra high level. Have right. fun with it still. And st- right. and I learn, you know, and you can learn new techniques and stuff on it as well. So that's my mm-hmm. other, that's my, my painting side of my, my goals. Yeah, that's one I probably well, should make. David ones. is always telling me to, uh, to just paint it. Just try to speed yeah. paint something. Yeah. 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 Speed paint it. Or if it's something that you normally would have spent 40 hours on and you just spend 20 hours on it mm-hmm. and it's a just super it high tabletop, then it's yep. fun. And, yep. you know, or if it's just really the front that's done really great and the back <laughs> is just kind of good, you know, then fine. Mm-hmm. It's whatever it is. <laughs> yep. you know, so what about yeah, you, Jay? Chill. What about me? Yeah. Uh, as far any... as New Year's resolutions? Yes, sir. I spent uh, about the last quarter of last year uh, getting tools and materials together. I'm going to be doing some big gallery uh, wood carvings, I think. Oh, cool. Um, I've got a house full of precious stones and bones and horns and teeth and hair. Don't cut your thumb. Whatever you do, don't cut your thumb. I just cut my thumb, so be careful. I my hands are just a mass of scar tissue. I don't right. that doesn't really bother me anymore. <laughs> I'm just imagining uh, but, you with just like this massive scar tissue with little yeah. sculpting tools poking out. Yeah. 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 I I I mean I love the process of digital sculpting, but I do miss working with my hands on stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I'm kind of starting to feel a call to work a little bit on stuff for myself or for a different audience. So it's certainly, that's what I'll do in my spare time. I mean, obviously my job is sculpting miniatures and I'm just great with that, but uh, no, it's time to start busting out on some of this other stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, the, how do you, I just, I just how do you divvy drive. up your time, Jason? How do you take your commission time of your doing your commission job? Do you make it in a nine to five, eight to five kind of thing? And then you like, okay, now, instead of going and popping your butt in front of a TV or whatever, now I want to do creative. Is that, that's how I kind of think I, of it. I well, got my job, I try job to get, but I, I try yeah. to get at least eight to 10 hours in a day on a normal work. We'd say five days a week, eight to 10 uh-huh. hours in on a day for my paying jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll go up to 12 or 14 if I'm on a deadline or if a client needs uh, changes made or if there's some manufacturing thing that we need to juggle uh, or or even a priority thing that we need to juggle. Um, I'm perfectly fine with shifting into overdrive for, for finishing that. Mm-hmm. But yep. it is very important to take time to yourself. You know, it's, it's hard to... Uh, underrate actually sitting on your butt in front of the TV. That's, that's really, sometimes that's what you do. Uh, mm-hmm. Or, or going out. I, I like to go outside more, but like mm-hmm. you pointed yeah. out with uh, a foot of snow and it's cold, it's kind of, yeah, that becomes less right. and less attractive, I think to me every year. So, but uh, no, that, yeah, it's, it's very important to have that balance. And a lot of times mm-hmm. for me, the balance is, putting aside the, the paying work and doing something still creative that I'd like to do just because mm-hmm. I see it in my head or whatever. Mm-hmm. And every yeah. project I do spawns 10 other projects in my brain. So I mm-hmm. uh, talk about a backlog. I mean, you know, I, I try to at least jot down or sketch something out as I'm working. And if I don't do that, I find myself too easily diverted to a mm-hmm. different project. And I have to be very disciplined in not doing that. That's how it works for writers too. Yeah. You start a book and then you get ideas for three more books. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, I, yeah. I got this great idea for a whole different setting with a whole different character suddenly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. We're getting towards the end of the show. Now it's the time oh, to no. pub everything that Anne does. So Anne, okay. Monday through oh, Friday, no. 1130 Central, painting, oh wait, uh, Reaper Toolbox. Uh, Reaper, Pro to Reaper Pro Reaper Tips. Reaper Pro Tips. They Pro call tips. me a pro. They call me a pro. Yeah. I am making a living you, doing it now, so yeah. <laughs> you And you are a professional, at least in my book. 
Yeah, I would. Not hashtag not Absolutely. quite professional. <laughs> I didn't do any. I didn't do any air quotes or anything. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, no. I'd say the moniker. Well, I'll tell fits. you a story once about right. Ron getting mad with mad at me of using air quotes, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> right now. Yeah. Um, now you you have your Patreon. Yes. Painting yes, big. Yes, Patreon.com Ta- slash painting big. Yes. What do you definitely. Do? So and, tell me about the and levels my... and yeah, sell us oh, yeah. on that. Okay. Sell me on that. Yeah. Sure. Sure, absolutely. Yes, um, it is. It is a lot of master series paint. So if you are at all interested in Reaper's Paint Line, then it is your. Uh, it should be your go-to Patreon. Um, mm-hmm. If you just are into techniques, though, I mean the stuff that I teach on that, you can use any paint line for. It's all applicable. Mm-hmm. I have a two-dollar tier that gets like a short video or a short PDF a month. Uh, my five-dollar tier is called Color Workshop, and that's where we really go in depth on the paint, on the qualities of different colors, the uses for different colors. Sometimes the idiosyncrasy. I talk a lot about kind of the types of pigments in the different colors and how that affects how they work. Um, Mm -hmm. And then the $10 tier is I've I've started making my $2 tier a little more basic intermediate and my $10 tier a little bit more intermediate advanced. It doesn't always work that way, but in general, uh, the $10 tier is more of a deeper dive. I found that I was doing a lot of video on it in the past, so I've actually switched from that to doing a lot of PDFs this year just to kind of switch it up. Um, and usually okay. they're longer PDFs, at least five to seven pages, um, one per month. So pop for the 10 bucks, you cheap passages. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you get everything previous when you pop for the next level. So essentially, if you're at the $15 level, which is paint along, you not right. only get two paint along videos a month, but you get the $10 PDF and the $5 PDF and the $2 video. Oh, Plus the way there's more. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's insane. Gosh, it's insane, that's man. Insane. Look at that. Do you do um, any private then, uh, coaching? I already, yes, actually, you just, ta-da, Michael, Michael, yeah. with the, uh, oh, with the, the switch over. Yeah. Um, yeah. For patrons only, because I don't have a lot of extra time, and I wanted mm-hmm. to kind of keep it special in my Patreon, I was doing a coaching tier, but it wasn't really working out great, because it was like mm-hmm. a lot of people, it's like homework. If you're in a coaching tier of a Patreon, you have to like come up with a project every month that you're going to get coached on, right? And for mm-hmm. a lot of people, that's really difficult if they don't have a lot of time. Right. So I kept having right. people who had to like get on my coaching level and then jump off because they just didn't have the time to keep up with it. So what I did mm-hmm. is I shrunk that down and I still have a couple of people on my coaching level. But instead, just uh, just on New Year's Day, I told all of my patrons that if they wanted to get a coaching on any project of theirs, they could just email me and you know pay via via paypal and i would slot them in so Mm. essentially anybody any patron you can be on it for two bucks and you still get access to me if you want it oh cool yeah the only limit is the amount of time um just the amount of people who want it because then i have to i have to make sure i've got enough time so i don't burn out but so yeah so i do that pro tips we have pro tips we have patreon and then Mm -hmm. we have painting big streaming on twitch uh, yes, on Saturdays, uh, right around yeah. 3.30 p.m. USA Central Time. Uh, I okay. usually go for at least an hour and a half. Sometimes we go to two hours. I have gone to like two and a half hours once just because I lost track of time. Mm-hmm. But on those shows, I work on big stuff like busts, like the little mm-hmm. bust here I've been working on. And, uh, yeah. and where's that uh, Noel? Noli. Where's that Noel chick? Noli. Noli. Yeah, there she is. Yeah, she's yes, fantastic. Awesome. That's a great skill. But you're doing a fantastic cool. job on that. Yeah, she's getting closer to done. I really need to just knuckle down the hair, the hair I'm running into the, because there's so much of it. Um, and so well, much of it's in shadow. So yeah, it's hard. To, and that's a project to... that you've been working on for a long time. Yeah, I go to her when I've got like some time and oomph um, where I've just, because mm-hmm. usually when I get sunk in on her, I really, I'm pushing myself a little bit on her because she's a directed light source from the side. And so part yeah. of her is in shadow. So the challenge is to create uh the cool light on that mm-hmm. side of her you know where she's still not not in total darkness but where the colors do shift colder uh, and grayer cool. so it's it's an interesting challenge but that's why it's slow work because i have to stop and think about you know okay how is this color going to shift with a cool light a cool shadow light kind of thing um yeah but yeah and then i also do i also have started a new youtube series because you know i need more <laughs> in my life you need more yeah <laughs> But it's only once a month. Obviously. But, um, okay. but it's I'm also painting big on YouTube. Um, okay. Although I don't have my own painting. dedicated YouTube page yet. They still give me the weird, uh, just kind of weird code. Ah. Okay. But uh, 
it's it's a fundamentals of mini painting series. Mm -hmm. I decided I really wanted something where when people asked me, well, what about just like the fundamental techniques? Where can I just learn? I'm brand new to the hobby. You know, where can I just learn the the absolute like fundamental things? I wanted to do a short video series that was very targeted to that. Um, and that's actually almost my favorite thing that I'm doing now. I just uh, put up the washes one. We've only got two episodes so far. I'm just doing one a month. So again, I don't get burned out. Okay. Yeah. But it's making me um, actually, I think that more than anything, Michael, is informing mm -hmm. my other painting ah. because I'm having to break it down mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. precisely as to right. type of brush, consistency of paint. You know, it's um, the exact brush stroke you're using. Uh, yeah, how stuff are you, you don't you think know? about now. I mean, you know, who thinks right. about exactly. that? It's natural so you have to kind of yeah. go back and break it out. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm no, finding I found that, that I've... yeah. Mm -hmm. When you have to teach, you have to think through that where you're just in your little world over here and I'm painting something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you do shade yeah. metallics, Michael? Well, let me think about how I do that. How do I? <laughs> yeah. Do that? yeah. That, yeah. That's or actually how, very how hard. I I, yeah. You yeah. know, that's yeah. uh, I I envy teachers that are able to express mm -hmm. that because I do I I get in a groove and if someone asks me what how I did something, I don't really know. It's mm -hmm. like muscle memory right? Yeah. Yeah. You're just doing yeah, I it discovered. And... Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say that what I discovered was that when I sat down to do the first video was base coating and I'm like, oh man, how am I going to make this exciting? But I actually found that there was an amazing amount of nuance in getting a smooth base coat. Mm -hmm. Like there were actually a lot of things to think about that we just do mm -hmm. maybe automatically that we don't right. think much about. And I even like I don't know. I was able to break it out a lot more than I thought I would be able to. Um, yeah. And they're seven minute videos. So you have to keep it short. You have to be on right. target. Yeah. So, yeah. So those Ooh. more than anything, the YouTube series, as that grows, um, you know. So you're lining up sponsorships as we speak on for your YouTube? <laughs> no, but I just, I got, you know, because YouTube used to just be the dumping ground for all my streams or at least right. the streams that I felt, you know, were were valuable. And I get some views on that. But when I started doing these targeted short videos, my viewership, my views went up a lot. Um, well, that gives you an want. opportunity to edit things too, right? I mean, you can mm -hmm, make them mm -hmm. even more concise. Right. Like I know if, I try to, if I yeah. try to break Who's... down what I'm teaching, very often I yeah. mess it up because I'm trying yeah. to think while I'm doing it. I know. Well, we're going to see that coming up next week, hopefully. Um, little yeah. tease there. Oh, but back to YouTube painting videos. Anil mm -hmm. or Angel Heraldes. Mm -hmm. Heraldes. Um, mm -hmm. His YouTube videos, he's got talk about sponsorships. <laughs> he has, he yes, has been fun. lined up, but uh -huh. I really like what he does. And even yeah. if they're in Spanish, the you know, the subtitles are fine. You have to watch it twice yeah. because you're trying to read and watch at the same time. And watch time. what he's doing. Yep. Yeah. I'm my Spanish is getting better, but it's still not that good. Um uh -huh. but those are those are great. I mean, they're free. They're out there for, for those yeah. to check out as well. I don't know. I've never, I've, yeah. I've met him a couple of times. He's a nice guy, but fantastic videos and they're, they're out there and there's other folks doing it too. That's what oh, I've yeah. been watching lately. Is there, is there, is there any painters out there that are inspiring you to look at things differently? Who let's see. Well, actually, well, both, both Kirill and Sergio. Mm-hmm and you can get on detailing just how micro mm -hmm. it's possible to get to get those realistic effects um sergio because he really got me to think about light and more dramatic lighting um david my my sweetie because the same thing he's a very um he is an interesting painter just because he uses light so intuitively like i've never mm -hmm. seen anybody he can just dash it off he doesn't even like think about it and then mm -hmm. the final one would be oh crap i just had it and i just lost it oh a guy, and I've only, I haven't met him in person, but I've seen his stuff on Facebook, Darren Hahn. Hmm. Darren does extreme, like, photorealistic bust faces. Mm. Like, mm -hmm. seriously, it looks photorealistic. It's insanely good. Um, mm. And so when I started painting my uh, little Templar girl, I kind of studied mm -hmm. his style and, and started trying mm. to be get more realism in my skin tones, uh, which actually mm. drove me to go back to artist paints. Mm -hmm. Um, because, uh, Rossiana, Rossiana is your friend for skin tones. Right. Uh, 
and uh yeah his his stuff is really inspiring i just love cool. how he gets it to look so real yeah i think it's i i want to always ask that question especially to our professional painters when we have them on is because you're professional yet you're not done learning and you're not done being oh, inspired never, never. And you're, there's always somebody that is out there that can you know go oh my god like i've gone back to and i've been looking at a lot of rusto's stuff mm -hmm. and he just blows me away he's got some videos out there and of course mm -hmm. uh sergio is still my probably my number one inspiration um oh, for yeah. myself i really enjoyed mm -hmm. the time i got to spend with him out at reaper and and mm -hmm. for our class and whatnot but his style speaks to where i want to be or where i want to go so much in right, my own right. direction but yeah, yeah. And the other thing I find a lot of inspiration in actually is, um, and this is something that brought David and I together is we both love going to art galleries, like just traditional mm -hmm. and museum. So just going to a crap ton more art museums and being exposed mm -hmm. to painters down through the ages. And it gives you so much idea. Like you get so many ideas about light or texture or color or color combinations. Um, and just start thinking about what, how to kind of push the envelope and push yourself. So I get a mm -hmm. lot of inspiration from traditional artists. Well, cool. Um, I think Justin, are you around? I am here. All right. We're a quarter after usually I haven't, I haven't even looked at my phone to see if you texted me. No, um, it was, uh, this is the first one we've had this year. So I was kind of letting you guys okay. do your thing. Good. Mm -hmm. I know you're still kind of, uh, getting your legs under you. So I just want to make sure we're not taking too much yeah. of your time away. No, no, no. I'm, I'm... Um, I'm fine. I'm, I'm welcoming the, uh, the, the interaction being that I'm not allowed back at work yet. So, yeah. <laughs> but, well, um, you, let's do some giveaways. You want to? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Let's let me, let me total what this are, up here. All right. So, I think we're at like 15 or something. I'm we're, guessing. We're not quite there, but we 15 are giveaways. At, yeah, I think so. We are actually yeah. at six though. Ooh, That's pretty good. Wow. That is pretty damn good. I knew you guys could do it. I Get knew you guys could do it. Yeah. Hashtag I was like, free. I was right. in my head. Like, your you get, to five free. get your hashtag freeze in. We're going to be drawing here in just a second. Yeah, I just yeah. um, if you're uh, next across the way in Europe, uh, we will likely you ship you your Poke tool via the the freighting that we do to our, our EU hub. So uh, that means that it could take an extended period of time to get your Poke tool. Yes. But you'll get it. So, but you you'll get it. Yes. Yeah. You should. And I, and just as a tease for next week, we are efforting to start our introductory, i.e., teach the moron to sculpt, um, spinoff to the Crow's Nest show. It's still going to be the Crow's Nest, but you know, Jason's mm -hmm. going to be trying to teach me how to sculpt with green stuff for putty um, with standard tools. So your traditional sculpting. I don't know what we're doing or. So it's going to well, be I thought fun. You wanted to start um, with a squirrel. Yeah, I do want to sculpt a squirrel. I want to sculpt yeah. a, a screaming squirrel. Oh a my screaming god! Squirrel. A screaming squirrel. Screaming okay. squirrel. Yep. So sitting up, screaming, standing up, screaming. Yeah, I like that Just, thing you said today. Kind of. Yeah, well, kind of like that. Thank yeah. you for the bits, okay. Numbat. I, uh, it looks like yeah. uh, he just tucks some he tucks some bits into uh into Cranky your Dog says head. start with a snake. Ah, a so I got some. What do I get to do with those bits? Well, it's, it's ten bucks. So I don't know ten. what you used to make back in your college stripping days, but uh, oh wow, where yeah. do you stick them? Uh, well, you know, that's for another show. <laughs> uh, but, but thank you, folks. By the way, since we're yeah. yes, thanks everybody. I just drew yeah. the names. Who wants to read right. the names? And would you like to read the names? Do you have I, chat in front of you? I don't have any way to see the names. Okay. You can't see the I'll, chat. I'll, re I'll read the names. Yeah. We'll have you on again. Okay. And we'll, we'll have you read the names next time. All, All right. right. I'm ready. Michael? I'm ready. I'm Here ready. Here we okay. go. This is always go. the best part of the this show. This is always a train wreck. Oh, this it is. is always That's what Michael says. Train wreck. He says it's the best yeah. part of the show. Uh, Saragon. Saragon has won. Saragon, congratulations. Uh, Crazy Demo. Crazy, crazed moo, crazed moo, yeah. Oh, crazed moo! Yay! Crazy good moo. job. Yeah. Avrilina oh, here we go. Darnassius. Where are the easy <laughs> ones? <laughs> Avrilina, congrats. Here's an Avrilina. easy one. Uh, 
I don't see it. Is there anything after I, Ravro? I don't. I, I thought I was bad Ravro, during the yeah. MSP awards ceremony, but dang. It's like oh someone God. named Ascentes. Uh Oh, there's eyeballs. Um, anything? There's a bunch of eyeballs on the one that I can't read. So someone's well, gonna have to read that. No, oh. there's one called Ascentes after. Uh, yes. And then here's yeah, the next it's one. got I, it's got Neverlina. people's eyeballs on it. Uh, oh, WDF. No, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's got and, eyeballs on it. Last but not least. Last but not least. Uh, Mo Brock oh 0918. That's funny because oh, wow. Mo Brock just posted, just commented right before Mo Brock won. Nice. Uh, what's the likelihood of huh. that happening? Oh, That's that crazy. might be an exploit he discovered. Oh. I think, yeah. Is that, is, or she. Yeah. Yeah. Don't gender identify without knowing. I did. I'm <laughs> sorry. I just I, I went off the name. <laughs> You're fine. Hey, Jason, when are you going to get a when are you going to get a tiki pug behind you? Oh, That's what I want to know. Pug. A tiki or pug. Tiki well, yeah, you need such a, a, thing tiki yeah. Yeah. Ooh, a thing might That's happen. Yeah, that's a grand idea. Yeah. It is. I just and he's got tiki's yeah. and pugs. You need the mech, you I need do. the mashup now. Mm, I do. Yep. Well, we'll see. We may have another right. Kickstarter coming up soon. Well, yeah. congratulations to everybody that won. Congrats. Um, Jason, Jason just teased that Reaper may be having another um, Kickstarter. Um, so there's that that's out there. Um, Bone six confirmed. And uh -huh. <laughs> um, I want to thank everybody. Reaper Aaron this Friday. Uh, Reaper. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We get oh, D &D and You're D &D we're D&D. &D and we're D&D. &D oh. And Abran oh. is level seven. That's Ooh. my wood elf character. I know. Right. And he Dang. got a necklace of fireballs. Um, oh, no. So I get wonderful. to throw fire. I know it's dangerous. <laughs> that's not wonderful. That's <laughs> it's not fireball. really. No, it's not really. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, Chaos and that's, ham. yeah. And Abran's worse than me. <laughs> oh, oh, great. Yeah. Yes. The Abran CDC cut the blast distance on the fireball to 15 feet <laughs> instead of 30 for friendly. So, so. Thank God. Right. right. <laughs> All right. Well, um, and. Thanks for being on. I'm sorry that yeah. you haven't been on before. We're going to have you Thank on you again. Thank you for inviting me. It was one of my favorite shows of the new year. Yeah, this is <laughs> the best one so far this year. <laughs> By a long show. way. Thank you, all year. Thanks. Yeah. All of 2022. This Finger is the best show. Finger hearts for you, too. <laughs> Finger hearts. Finger hearts. All right. With that, hey, Justin. <clears throat> yes. The wrap up. Hey, hey, hey Justin. Yes. Hey, um, thanks so much for being here. I hope you had a, uh, <laughs> yeah. hope you're having a great new year as well. Um, and, uh, are we going to be raiding anybody? Uh, yes, yeah. we are. Cool. Oh, let's see. You know what? Let's raid, um, C not. We haven't raided C not. Yeah. Right. He also no, has the best soundtracks. we haven't raided th this year yeah. at all. Yeah. No, we definitely no, we haven't raided yeah. this year. I know. Super great right? guy. Super, super awesome. That guy sculptor, gets up so. early. I think I get notifications yes. for a show at five o'clock in the morning, my time. Hey, Mo Brock, Mo Brock, is this the best Crow's Nest show because this is the first one you watched? Was it because <laughs> Ann was on or is it because you won a tool? Because oh, of our yes. scintillating oh. personality. Yes is the appropriate answer. Yes, yes is the, and, and you know, Jason and I as, as yes. the best host yeah, on I mean, Twitch. Now yeah, I mean, now I best hosts. Yeah, best well, hostesses. Thank you guys. Yeah very All much right. for watching as cool. always uh thank yep. you for the yes, raids you, and for everyone who gave subs uh and bits and everything it's it's really great to see the support um and we will uh see you guys tomorrow morning for Ann's show actually yes yeah. yes tomorrow yeah. 11 30 a.m usa central time be there for our reaper pro tips right. yep could be on have a great rest wait of it will time. be on okay. yeah, it will be on bye guys you gotta wave bye 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 you, you gotta wave on. Wave. What's yeah, this wave? wave. That's Tell me the wave. <laughs> <laughs>